Hey, we are in a series in Thessalonians, and uh, we're looking at Thessalonians, first, uh, first and Second Thessalonians, and today specifically we're in First Thessalonians 5. So uh, me being uh, a creative one, I thought I would title this, do you see it? All right, Church Life 101, part two. If you were here last week, it was part one, but Mark didn't know it was going to be part two because I just did that. So anyway, um, the Apostle Paul is writing to let believers know that no one really knows the time when Jesus will return. So as believers, um, we, we need to be alert. We need to be ready for his return. Are you ready for his return? Yeah. Amen. 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 Um, he concludes the letter with a few brief reminders of what it means to encourage each other. And Mark hit on some of those last week, and, and I'm going to hit on a, a few today. And, and so I'm really excited about where we're going. Um, this, is, this is great. So if you have your notes in the big idea there, the big idea is hope in the return of Christ tomorrow is what inspires believers to walk with Jesus today. Is that cool? Our hope in the return of of Christ tomorrow is what inspires believers to walk with Jesus today. Now, I'm not sure what's going on in your life this morning. I don't know how stressful it was to get the kids ready and get them down here and and all that stuff or just getting out of the house or whatever, but but I truly believe that God has a word for us today. And I'm just like, I just can't wait to get into this because this is awesome. But my hope is that you guys will leave here today more encouraged than what you were when you came in. Does that sound good? Yeah. Woohoo! Right on. You guys are awake. This is awesome. I <laughs> love it. So let me ask you a question. And this might be a good question. It might be a bad question. If you're a believer here today, are you living in such a way that if Jesus were to come back today, he would say, well done, good and faithful servant? Or would he say, really? <laughs> you know? Um, so... Anyway, I just want to encourage you to that. Um, and as a side note, maybe you're here today and you've never made a personal decision to follow Jesus. Uh, I would really, really like to encourage you to listen today and, and really hopefully connect with God in maybe a way you've never done. Um, what Paul is saying here in 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5 is that if you're a believer, and it's not to be offensive, but it's like he says that you live in darkness, And we don't want you to live in darkness. Jesus says that, uh, he says, I am the light in John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And we would desire to see you find the light today. Jesus also says in Matthew 11, 28, he says, come to me. All of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Are you tired? Are you looking for peace, maybe meaning, forgiveness? See, that is bestowed on all of us that have found the light, that have put their trust in Jesus, that he gives us rest and peace and meaning and forgiveness, and he would desire for you to have the same. Okay, back to, the, back to the passage today. Uh, again, if you have your Bibles open to 1 Thessalonians 5, we're looking at a huge amount of scripture today. I mean, it may take the whole service just to read through it. Um, three verses. 1 Corinthians 5, 16 says, Rejoice always. That's 16. 17, pray continually. 18, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is... God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That's it. I was kidding. It doesn't take much. So number one, your notes is is this. Rejoice always. It's this idea of calmly happy at all times. For me, that's an epic fail. Okay, I I love to rejoice, uh, have a great time with God, but I just forget to rejoice when things don't go my way or life kind of throws me a curve. Last uh, Saturday night, I was changing the oil in my truck. How many of you guys change your own oil? A few of you? Wow, okay. It's not that hard. (laughs) 
I actually had to stop changing my oil for a while because I'd bust my knuckles and all of a sudden I wasn't rejoicing. So anyway, so uh, I've probably done this 50 times. I've had my truck for 24 of its 25 years of life. And, and for whatever reason, when I put the, you know, took the old oil filter out, drained the oil, put the new oil filter on, I started up and there's oil spraying all over the garage floor. And I'm like, what is going on? You know, it's brand new oil. And I'm like, Ugh. And, and so this 20-minute job ends up taking me an hour and a half. And I still, still couldn't figure it out. And so it was Saturday night. I'm thinking, man, you know, and, and if you don't know, I've been, I've been helping out at the uh, New Hope campus. And, and so I, like, had to borrow a car on Sunday morning. And, and uh, my next-door neighbor has been coming to church out there. And, and he's a mechanic. And I just said, hey, Lynn. I said, I don't know what's going on with my truck, but this afternoon, do you think you could come and take a look at it? And he's like, sure, Raj, no problem, you know? And he knows that if I finally come to him, he knows I've exhausted everything and I am just, I'm done, okay? And so uh, he walks over there, and typical mechanic, 30 seconds, he figures out the problem, and I'm like, oh, man. Uh, and then I was rejoicing again because what it was, a little rubber seal on the on the filter stuck, on the, the old filter stuck on the engine block. And so when I tightened up the new one, it was just rubber on rubber. And as soon as pressure hit it, it was done. So anyway, you guys are wondering, why is he telling me the story? Well, because I just got to tell you that, that I don't always rejoice and I'm just a guy. You know, I'm up here, uh, I'm obeying my call, but I still make mistakes. I still blow it. And uh, so anyway, it's in those moments, though, that I'm totally humbled and and. <laughs> and God's like, he's probably laughing, chuckling, because, you know, I think of God as being my, my father, and which is something my dad would probably do, you go, and what a knucklehead. Anyway, um, but I realize how immature I am in the faith in those moments. Because when I read a word like this, it says, hey, man, we're to rejoice always. I don't always rejoice. And so uh, that's just something I really need to be working on in my life. And, and it's in those moments that I realize how closely I need to walk with Jesus, it's allowing him to work through me instead of me trying to do things on my, on my own. In the discussion questions last week, uh, Mark had us read Romans 12. And, and in Romans 12, it kind of explains how we can rejoice always. Because Romans 12, 12 says this, Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And it's that joyful in hope part. That as a follower of Jesus, we have hope. There's, there's way more for us that's coming up. Paul also says in Romans 5, 1 through 5, he says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope, there it is again, of the glory of God. See, it's God's glory that we rejoice in. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that sufferings, here it is, produces per perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. So our hope is in the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we can calmly, happily, if that's even a word, calmly, happily, we can be calmly happy at all times when we grab hold of the hope God has given us in Jesus. It is this hope that encourages believers to press on in the good times and the bad to the glory of God. Number two, it says pray continually, that's uninterruptedly, without ceasing, some of the versions say. It's this idea of keep on praying. I think of it as having like God on the brain, you know, it's just, you're just always in connection with God. Praying continually. So, how many of you remember your first love? Nobody raised their hands, like oh, a few of you, okay. First love. Man, for me, I couldn't think of anything else. It consumed my thoughts. Oh, man, every waking moment. And that Schwinn Stingray was the best bicycle a guy could ever have. <laughs> Banana seat, you know, the ape hangers, the, the slick on the back. You guys remember that? What a bike. 
The thing was awesome. Seriously. Um, it's this idea with God. It's being so connected with him that you can't function without him. You can't function without him. Are you there today? I'm growing in that. I hope you are too. You can't function without God. And prayer is simply talking with God. Maybe you're like, well, I'm not sure what this, this prayer thing is, you know. It's just having a conversation with him. Ephesians 6.18 says, pray at all times and on every occasion in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Tapping into the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God dwells in every believer. Allowing God to work through us through the power of the Spirit. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all Christians everywhere. Are you alert today? Are you persistent? Maybe, you, maybe you're here and you're going, man, I've been praying for this person for so many years. My own father, I prayed for my dad for 10 years and he finally came around, you know? So never, never think it's too late. And remember that prayer is a two-way street. We pray, God speaks to us through his word, through promptings, through, through other believers that uh, maybe we're seeking wise counsel. See, God speaks to us in, in, a, in a ton of different ways. But understand that God's not some kind of lucky rabbit's foot uh, that's to be summoned, you know, on, on a special occasion. No, he wants a relationship. He desires relationship with us. Do you have that kind of relationship with him? He desires one with you. Around here we use this simple acronym, PRAY. It's a tough one, which is praise, giving God praise when you're, when you're praying. Repent, repent of the things that, uh, that you, you're sad for, that you've blown it, that you realize, man, I'm not, I'm not measuring up in this area, God. I, I give that back to you. I repent. A lot of people say, um, ask for forgiveness. Well, God's already forgiven you. That's why you just need to repent and get right with him. Admit our wrong. The A in pray is for ask. Those are the things, God, can this happen or will you do this or what is? And, and the, the fourth one, the why, is yield. We yield to his will. Again, God isn't a lucky rabbit's foot. I mean, I don't know how many working with students, how many students that I hear, you know, God didn't hear me. And I try to explain to them, look, God hears your, your prayer. But you have to yield to his will. And I think that's where it gets tough sometimes because we're like going, well, you know, I prayed that, that my aunt would be healed and she wasn't. I don't understand that. It's God's will. And I, I don't understand all that. I'm not going to sit here and go, I got it together. I don't. But God does. And we just have to give it over to him and yield our will to what he has. So prayer. The third area is giving thanks in all circumstances. Now Paul of all people, had the right to probably complain and not necessarily give thanks. Um, but here he's challenging us to, to give thanks. In 2 Corinthians 11, Paul is kind of defending himself. And he, and he says this, and this is a New Living Translation. He says this, I know I sound like a madman, but I have served Jesus far more. I have worked harder been put in jail more often, been whipped times without number, and faced death again and again. Sounds like a great day, huh? Five different times the Jews gave me 39 lashes, and if you are familiar with that, 40 lashes would usually kill uh, a prisoner. So five times he had that done, they, they stopped right at the last moment. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Now that's, here in Grants Pass, that means they threw rocks at him, you know? <laughs> I um, just want to make sure you understand that. Um, after being beat, he may have needed some medication, but anyway, that's not what this means, okay? That's not what this means. It says, three times I was shipwrecked. Once I spent a whole night and day adrift at sea. I have traveled many weary miles. I have faced dangers from flooded rivers and from robbers. I have faced dangers from my own people the Jews, as well as from the Gentiles. I have faced danger in the cities, in the deserts, and on the stormy seas. I have faced dangers from men who claim to be Christians but are not. I have lived with weariness and pain I, and have had sleepless nights. 
Often I have been hungry and thirsty and have gone without food. Often I have shivered with cold, without enough clothing to keep me warm. Then besides all this, I have the daily burden of how the churches are getting along. Paul went through a lot. He went through a lot. And I wish I could stand here today and tell you that I've given thanks in all circumstances, but I haven't. I tend to be the kind of guy that's kind of the, the glass half empty. Maybe you can relate to that. Uh, and, I, and I think really what, is, what it comes down to is I really haven't fully embraced the fact that God's will will always be better than my own. And I realize just how far I've got to go. In February of 2004, my, um, my middle child was being bullied by three kids at his school. And what had happened uh, emotionally is he just kind of snapped. And really, it put our family into this interesting position that, to be honest with you, I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. It was, it was difficult. It was hard. It was some hard, hard times. And I wish I could say I was, you know, just praising God for that and, um, you know, fully embracing the idea of giving thanks, but I, I wasn't. To be honest with you, I, I was frustrated and probably even angry with God. But, how, you know, however, uh, God began to reveal to me what he was up to. And sometimes we don't always know what God's up to. So today I just want to encourage you that if you're in the middle of something and you're not sure what God's up to, just continue to press into him. Continue to, to seek relationship. Don't cut off the relationship because that's a lot of times what I see what happens is people like, man, God, I'm not going to listen. You know, that's, that's not what we should do. We should press in. And even though I was frustrated and didn't know the under, understand what was going on, he began to work, and he began to show me what he was doing. And, and the bottom line is, he was allowing me to begin to know how to minister to other people that were in the same situation or going to be going through the same situations that we were going through. And it was kind of at that moment when there was like this light at the end of the tunnel where I'm like going, okay, God, now I see what you're doing. But I sure wasn't excited in the, in the, <laughs> in the midst of it. Or the process. And so I, I wish I could have went, oh man, this was awesome. God was amazing. Uh, and he is. But for me personally, I was really struggling in that. I think James, the half-brother of Jesus, wrote his letter. Um, when he wrote his letter, the book of James, that he truly understood trials. James 1, 2 through 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops, here's the word again, perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. What God was doing in my life is, is maturing me so I could be complete. Now, I don't know I'll, if I'll ever reach that completeness here on this earth, but someday I look forward to it. Or I'll be complete with him as I'm with him in heaven. And, and I want to say today, too, that my son is doing well. My son uh, is leading worship, helping with CAD, helping with Midway, leading a Midway small group. Uh, helps lead worship out the New Hope campus. I mean, God's doing some amazing things in his life. And he loves Jesus and he's growing in his faith. And you know what? I look at that and go, all right, God, you had this all along. You got it together. Where are you in your journey with Christ? In conclusion, I have studied this week, I've realized the one way we know we're growing in our faith is that whatever God brings our way, these three things that we're looking at today, this idea of rejoicing always, praying continually, and giving thanks in all circumstances will be evident. Those things will be evident. May not be fully there, but they're going to be there. We're going to be working on it, understanding. I guess that's my encouragement today is that, that God is doing something. So here's the key. It is God's will for you to live out these traits by walking in the power of the Spirit and taking every thought captive. So number four in your notes is this. That God's divine power gives us the strength to march with Jesus. And you notice I didn't use the term walk. 
I use the term march, because we need to place ourselves under his authority and making sure that he is working in our lives. God's divine power gives us the strength to march with Jesus. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. That, that Greek word, the root word of that is dunamis. It's where we get the word dynamite. It says we have, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You have the power if you're here today and you are walking with Jesus no matter where you're at. You have the divine power of God dwelling within you to demolish any stronghold that you may have. Are you there? Are you willing to allow God to come in and and break down the stronghold, whatever it may be? Do you understand God's divine power within you? He is such a good God. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this word today. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. God, I pray if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you in a personal way, that today they would receive you as Lord and Savior. It's a simple prayer for you. It's just, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. And, and I believe that you're the Savior. I, I receive you now. I invite you into my life to make you my, my Savior. And as I grow in you, my Lord, thank you for saving me. And maybe you're here today and maybe you're a believer, but maybe you're, you're struggling in a stronghold. I just like to pray for you. Lord, I pray for those in here today that are struggling. I mean, we're all struggling in some way, some form, but maybe this is something more intense than what we can feel, that we feel we can deal with. And so today, God, I just ask that you bring healing, that you help us to tap into that that power that only comes from you to overcome anything, God, that we're dealing with. Thank you. And Lord, for those that are walking strong with you, I just want to encourage them, God, to continue walking strong. May your spirit just encourage them today that they will be uh, leaving here excited about what you're doing in their life and realizing that they, they do rejoice and pray and give thanks all the time or most of the time. Lord, I thank you for them. God, you are such an awesome God. We love you. Amen.